Welcome back. Today we're going to be going over VHRT bounties. This video is going to focus on using the previous videos that I've made and applying those tactics into actual combat. If you haven't seen those videos before, they'll be linked down in the description box below. With that being said, let's get into it. The first thing you want to try to establish is an orbit around the ship. The goal is to keep his guns pointed away from you. As I approach the target here, I want to corkscrew as I maneuver around him. As I push into him, I start to strafe down to try to get around his side. Once I'm at the rear, I try to maintain that. I keep strafing down as I push him here and I try to lock him in front of me. But because my shields are low and I'm taking too much damage, I decide to just burst out of there. This is an important aspect in the beginning since you're usually going to be fighting multiple ships. You have to visually glance at your shields from time to time to make sure you're not in danger. If you are in danger, you want to try to get away and get some distance so you can reset the fight. Take the advantage here to recharge your shields and recharge your energy on thrusts. As I reapproach the target here, I try to get above him to get a better advantageous position. I try to strafe again to the rear of his ship where he can no longer shoot at me but I can maintain a lock on him. That said, the Hurricane does have a turret and because it's able to get a shot at me, I have to stay mobile. This is where I push forward and try to go in a circle around the ship, trying to stay away from his direction of fire. On this next target, I first try to line up some shots and then start to push into him. As I push into him, I strafe above him and rotate my ship to now strafe down. This allows me to continue my orbit. As he's getting his nose on me, I decide to push forward and strafe around his right, trying to always maintain a favorable position for myself. On here, I made a slight mistake and I pushed too far forward, so I decided to just reset the fight, get some more energy back in my thrusters and get my shields back up to 100, and try to reassess the position that I'm in. As I reapproach the ship, I try to corkscrew around him. This allows me to put on fire without taking too much myself. As I get ready here, I start to pre-aim at where he is going so that I can cut off his circle and get tighter on him. This allows me to push into him while he's rotating to face my old position. I constantly keep doing this as he tries to rotate to my last location and then use the inertia against him to push past and go to a new location. This is how you maintain an orbit push. Here I'm trying to close the gap so I can get tighter on him and hold a better circle. In this position here, I'm in an optimal angle where I'm strafing around him and have him locked in a position where he can't get his nose on me. This is the perfect angle to hold because they're just wasting time sitting there while you take free shots at them. Once he gets an angle on me here with his turret, I just push past and go to another side, keeping my mobility high so that it makes it hard for him to get shots off on me. I kept this clip because this illustrates a perfect orbit angle around the ship. As I fire around the ship, I'm only strafing to the right and up. As you can see by my pilot's visuals, the g-force effects are very powerful in this position. This is due to how fast you're moving around the target, with the added benefit of making it very hard for them to hit you. With this next target, I want to go over how I'm strafing in the directions that I'm facing, so you have a better understanding of where my movement is. I push forward here and I strafe around the right. I'm now strafing down. As I strafe down, I start to get my target acquisition and I start to get ready for the next counter. As he gets his nose closer to me, I start to push into him and strafe down on my rotation. This now has me strafing behind his thruster instead of flipping the side of him. As he starts to get his nose on me here, I use the inertia against him. By flipping my ship over and using the stronger thrusters on the bottom, I strafe back around him in orbit again. I immediately start to strafe to the right here as I know he's going to re-rotate to me. While I push forward and rotate to the right, my speed is so high now that he just can't keep up with it. I now maintain another downward strafe and try to get my target acquisition once again. Here I realize that he's getting his nose on again so I roll to use the bottom thrusters again and then I start strafing down as I roll around him. Here I strafe to the left, to the top, to the right, to the bottom, and push in. Remember that there is no such thing as the perfect way to rotate. Understanding movement and directions in Star Citizen is a key feature to combat. And this comes with time and practice. The more you understand how to orbit objects that are in motion, the better you will become at combat. A final tip that I can give you when it comes to doing these kind of missions is to focus on the weaker targets first. You want to prioritize things like buccaneers, sabers, light fighters in general, or medium fighters before you start to focus on the heavier ships. That said, there are a couple ships to really watch out for. For example, in Atmosphere, the Drake Cutlass is very good at maintaining target on you. Because it can fly so easily in Atmosphere and it has a very strong turret, it is something to be watchful of, and it's something that I generally like to focus on first. That's going to be it for this video, and again, if you struggle with any of these points, make sure to watch my previous videos.
Catch you on the next one.